Hello friends. So next we are going to see implementation of a DRAM cell. DRAM stands for Dynamic Random Access Memory. So how in case of DRAM memory we are storing one bit of information in a cell that we are going to see next. So basically in case of DRAM the information whatever it is either one or zero one binary bit value will be stored in the form of a charge on a capacitor. So capacitor is going to store the information, right? And to control uh, the to control this particular cell, connected to uh, it is connected through a switch, and the switch is connected to the word line. So whenever the word line is active, that time transistor will be switched on. Then based on the values uh, means the amount of charge stored on the capacitor, bit line value will be set, right? So here, see the dynamic RAM, DRAM, in generally it is slow, cheap as well as dense. How it is dense and why it is cheap and slow, we will see. One thing we can observe that it is cheaper. Why? Because to store one bit of information, we require one transistor and one capacitor. But in case of SRAM, to store one bit of information, we require six number of transistor. How, uh, and in my last video, I have explained that why it is taking six transistor. Two transistor where the two switches connected to the two bit lines through the word line, as well as the two cross connected inverters forming the latch. That is the storage element. But in our DRAM, storage element is the capacitor, and one transistor is our switch, right? So because of that, it is cheap. And next point is denser memory. Denser means what? In a particular area, in one particular unit area, means how many cells I can implement, how many cells we can realize. So see, if I am going to uh, design this memory chip of this size using SRAM, then see, for each cell I require 6, 6 number transistors. But in case of DRAM, the same size chip, I require for one cell, one transistor, one capacitor. So more number of cells, can be accommodated in the same area. Due to that, it is said that DRAM is denser memory. Why it is cheap is also understood. But next is what? why it is slow, we will see it shortly. Then next is DRAM memory is basically used for implementing our main memory, right? Main memory. And see how one cell is uh, implemented, one transistor and one trench capacitor. Trench capacitor, that will store one bit of information and how the information is stored in the form of a charge on the capacitor and the charge can be maintained only for tens of milliseconds. This is one very important point. Here information is stored in the form of charge in the capacitor but the point is the charge that it is storing that will remain there will remain intact only for tens of milliseconds and this is the problem. Because of that, whatever charge we have stored, we keep on uh, means need to recharge it. Then only the information will remain intact as long as power supply is there. So, but the cell is required to store the information for a much longer time. As long as power supply is there, information should be stored there. But our, in our case, the charge will start discharging after tens of milliseconds. So, what we have to do? We have to refresh the content. Uh, we, the contents must be refreshed. And how we are going to refresh? By restoring the capacitor's charge to its full value. Means whatever charge was there to store 1 or 0, that amount we again need to recharge. And one more point, please do understand. This refresh operation we need to do periodically. Because see, this phenomenon will occur every tens of millisecond. So after one ten mill means tens of millisecond, we have uh, refresh it. But again, the same thing will happen. So every that tens of millisecond, whatever is the time gap where that uh, charge will be discharged, but within that time again we need to recharge this capacitor, and thereby we can retain the information in the cell as long as power supply is there. So in case of DRAM, we need to perform this refresh operation. And see, when we perform the refresh operation, during that time, 
the cell will not be available for normal read and write operation due to that the dram memory will become slower so see three characteristics we have seen this is kind of on negative side slow cheaper is very good denser memory is also good because we want to design a bigger size memory but we have a limited size space so within that if we can accommodate more number of cells then it is on a benefit side right how the information is stored in the form of a charge so next is again we'll discuss why periodic refreshing is required there we said that charge will discharge so we are doing the refreshing but why the discharging is means happening so that we will see here so see after the transistor is turned off the capacitor begins to discharge that already i mentioned this happens due to the capacitor's own leakage resistance capacitor has some leakage resistance due to that it starts discharging and another one more point the transistor actually continues to conduct a tiny amount of current measured in some pico amperes after it is turned off so it is also carrying some current may be very small that is pico amperes and this leakage resistance capacitor so due to both this phenomenon what happens is the charge is used to start discharging so when it discharging information will be lost so what we have to do we need to do refresh operation another important point it is periodic refresh means after every some time period we need to refresh the cells refreshing means whatever information was there in the cell again we will maintain that how we are going to do that we'll see during a read operation whenever i am performing a read operation from dram the transistor in a selected cell is turned on that is must the cell is activated right the transistor in the cell uh, means whatever cell from where i want to perform a read the transistor will be turned on that means whatever information is there that will go to the bit line now a sense amplifier see here it is amplifier is connected to the bit line that detects the uh, detects whether the charge stored on the capacitor is above some threshold value if it is that means if the charge is above some threshold value it drives the bit line to a full voltage state that represents logic value one please do understand see we are performing a read operation transistor will be turned on then what will happen when the transistor is on then whatever value is there here that will be available on the bit line so then see uh, bit line will have the value based on the charge stored on the capacitor right so sense amplifier connected to this bit line will sense this bit line and it will find out whether the charge stored uh, in the cell is above some threshold value if it is so then what the sense amplifier will do will drive this bit line to the full voltage stage that will represent logic value one and whenever it is uh, uh, made to full voltage state then it will recharge the capacitor to the full charge state right and that will make my information to be one see suppose some voltage amount is representing information one then slowly slowly it is getting discharged so before it becomes lower than the threshold value we need to perform the refreshing so whenever we read this cell and we get the value of charge above some threshold value that means it is on the higher side so we will pull it towards the full charge state corresponding to logic value one and other way around that means if the sense amplifier detects that the charge on the capacitor is below the threshold value that means it is represent logic value zero so it pulls the bit line to the ground level right that will ensure the capacitor will have no charge voltage is ground at ground level so charge uh, the charge on the capacitor will be no charge representing a logic value of zero so see during my read operation we are performing this along with reading the data we are recharging the cell right so hence reading the contents of the cell automatically refreshes its content right and see another important point we need to understand during refresh period that whenever refreshing is going on during that time the cell is not available for normal read and write operation 
and we need to perform this operation periodically after every some millisecond tens of millisecond right and see one more important point is there see when does uh, memory chip uh, uh, is um, when the uh, temperature increases in the memory uh, in the memory chip then the refreshing will be uh, required more frequently as compared to the normal situation that means if temperature is on higher side then discharging will occur quickly and that will uh, that will make our retention of the um, information for a smaller period of time so we need to do refreshing more qu quickly uh, than the normal scenario next we are going to discuss the difference between sram and dram this is one important topic sram versus dram cell already we know what is sram static ram where information is stored in the cross connected inverters those are implemented using four number of transistors two pairs of transistors connected in cross that forms your uh, your um, sram uh, storage element and two transistors are the two switches connected to the bit lines b and b bar and dram stores the information in the form of a charge so static ram or srams consist of circuits that are capable of retaining their state as long as power is there so see when power is there whatever we have stored in the latch that will be there throughout we need not have to perform any refresh operation due to this only static ram is faster compared to dram because in dram we require refreshing during refreshing we can't do the read and write operation right so volatile memories because their contents are lost when power is interrupted when power is switched off information will be lost access times of static rams are in the range of few nanosecond only few nanosecond however the cost is usually high why because one cell requires six number of transistors and another one is dynamic ram or drams they do not retain the state indefinitely so to make it store in the information what we have to do we have to do the refreshing contents must be periodically refreshed that means we need to repeat the refresh operation periodically contents are refreshed while accessing them for reading whenever we are performing reading that time also we are doing the refresh operation and see here sram requires low power to retain bit as power is consumed only when the cell is uh, means used when the cell is accessed right so these are the differences between sram and dram this much is there in this video next we are going to start a bigger size memory using some smaller size memory chips till then thank you